Welcome folks to a very difficult video actually. I'm going to be comparing the Reverb G2, version 2 in this case, to the Vario Aero. Which one is right for you? Now let me just start by saying quite simply the Vario Aero is the best VR headset right now that you can buy, without a doubt. However, it's not as simple as that because the price of the Aero is extremely high and that is because it's at the very pinnacle of VR technology. However, there are some decent alternatives out there. So if you're interested in this video and you haven't subscribed yet, please feel free to do so. It would really help the channel and future content. Thank you. Now we'll start with the Reverb G2 and the good points. And when I mention something that the Reverb G2 does better, I'll also highlight that and same with the Aero. Now let's start with the clarity of the Riva D2. It is by far the clearest uh, headset within the sort of mid consumer price point out there. It beats the 8KX, it beats the Vibe Pro 2 in my opinion, simply because uh, the optics and of course the colour palette, those vivid colours, it all comes together to produce a wonderful image in the centre. However, that centre image as we all know is extremely small. It's like that with most Fresnel based headsets. Um, and what that means is as soon as you look away from that center point, it gets blurry pretty damn quick. Um, and that is a huge trade off with the Reva G2 that of course the Aero completely wins over. But it's worth mentioning though that that clarity in the Reva G2 is absolutely remarkable, particularly because it's available at such a cheaper price point. I do think that when the Reva was first released, it was considered quite expensive, but now I think people realize the value of that headset when you consider the other options out there. So let's move on to the audio. Wow, the G2 absolutely blows apart anything out there on the market, simply because it has the index inspired floating ear design and the mid range the crisp high frequencies and the bass response are perfectly tuned in my opinion. They're maybe not quite loud enough for some people, but the quality of that sound is unmatched. When compared to the Aero, well, unfortunately the Aero doesn't even have any integrated audio, which is a great shame and probably its main Achilles heel in this particular case. Uh, yeah, the Reva D2 absolutely is incredible when it comes to the audio solution. What else does a Reva G2 have? Well, it has a great microphone. Again, the Aero does not have a microphone at all. Um, and I must admit, it can be a little toppy, can be a little bit, uh, it, it pick up too many frequencies really. But and overall, I think the microphone on the Reva G2 is extremely good and I use it all the time for recording. Of course, the comfort is also a huge area of the Reva G2 that, you know, scores very strongly. In fact, to be honest, I think it's a dead heat in this particular category for me because I like how with the Reva G2 you can take it on and off your head really quickly with those elastic straps. However, I also like how the Vario Aero has an infinite amount of adjustability which means you can just fly all day long without any problems at all but I guess that's just down to personal preference. What else? Well, of course, it's got to be the price. I mean, my goodness me, the Reva G2, as I've already mentioned, is about £600 in the UK and sometimes HP decide to have a great discount and you could probably get it for as low as £450. That is great value for money, it really is. And uh, when compared to the Aero, it's a very tempting proposition and the, probably the best VR headset for most people. Another important point, which I don't think anyone ever mentions on their YouTube videos, and I wanna make this very clear, is the software. And really, funny enough, the Aero wins on this one because it actually performs better than the G2 with about twice the amount of clarity, if not more. But in all fairness, the Reva G2 has motion reprojection at the time of this recording, the Aero does not. And the OpenXR toolkit, which by the way, the Aero can use as well, it just works really well with the G2 and for motion reprojection lovers, it absolutely works. Okay, so I think I've got two more points to make about the Reverb G2. Uh, one of which is a big deal. It's got inside out tracking, which means no base stations, but also it comes with controllers. They're not the best in the business, but they certainly do the job pretty well. Another point to mention is the field of view. The Reva G2 with the new version two facial gas kit with the spacer out, 
actually has a very good field of view now. It's pretty damn impressive. What they've done with it, um, yeah, it's made a difference to me anyway, um, particularly even with a VR cover, thin facial interface, it's still better than that. However, I do feel the arrow is still a bit wider uh, horizontally, but it's not as good vertically as a Reverb G2. Now let's talk about the Vario Aero. My goodness me, let me first explain something, okay? Vario have deep connections in the aerospace industry. What that means is training academies across the world, including military air forces like the Finnish Air Force and Lockheed Martin use it to train their pilots. So I do find it a little bit funny <laughs> when a lot of us armchair pilots have so much uh, sort of complaints about certain aspects of the headset. If it's good enough for an F-18 pilot, then it's definitely good enough for me. However, I do appreciate that some people do struggle with certain aspects. I'm gonna highlight some of them here. First of all, I wanna talk about obviously the clarity. That is the party piece of the aero. And even against the Reverb G2, it is absolutely incredible. I've never seen a display like it. It's even better than the VR3 that I borrowed a while back. The way I can describe it is looking through a pane of clear glass. And you know, when you can see really far out with your own eyes, that's exactly what it's like in the aero. That means far away distances, uh, you know, like aircraft, they're all very visible. You can see trees really clearly in the far distance in Microsoft Flight Simulator. It's like the lens has been lifted away and you're just looking at the VR image with your own eyes. It's spectacular. And that's of course due to the spherical lens design, which means you get 95% edge to edge clarity. So imagine your sweet spot in your Reverb G2, imagine that about 40% sharper over the entire image. It means you can look around with your eyes and not your head. It's a massive game changer. And it's of course the Aero's party piece. So I won't talk any more about that, okay? Because I think that's pretty damn obvious. As is the fact that this headset is far more future-proof when you consider it has fixed and dynamic favorited rendering built in, as well as eye tracking and automatic IPD adjustment. It also has a cooling fan, which dynamically changes depending on how hot it is in the headset, which, you know, I can't tell you how nice it is to have a very nice brush of cold air on your face during those intense combat situations. But it seems to know when you get a bit hot and that's when the fan kicks in. It's never, in my opinion, detracts from the enjoyment. It never dries your eyes out and it's not loud, folks. No matter what some reviewers say, the fan is so quiet, it doesn't matter. Unless you're doing some yoga or something, you're never gonna notice it. Not only that, the software, something that no one ever mentions in sort of their reviews on in YouTube land, <laughs> The fact is, the Vario-based software uses a lot more of your GPU than the old and archaic Windows Mixed Reality Portal. Uh, the software just does not even compare. And what that means is, you're getting twice, maybe three times better clarity, but you're also getting better performance in all your sims. This thing runs even better than the Quest 2. So bear that in mind. Also, as of, uh, I'm pleased to say, uh, the recent Vario-based update, distortions, which admittedly has been a problem for many people, well, they're pretty much gone now. I'll tell you that now for a fact. Uh, there's a few issues with DCS, but that's a known problem and something separate, but I thought I'd still mention it. But for everything else, you know, including Half-Life Alex, like games as well, but also obviously the heavyweights like Microsoft Flight Simulator, X-Plane, IL-2. They've just done a stellar job of ensuring that distortions are just not an issue moving forward. So to sum up this comparison, really, there is no comparison. They're both very different VR headsets and you need to understand this. The Vario Aero is literally a professional grade headset now available to consumers and is used within the aerospace industry. So every time I fly with it, I feel that sense of weight and not weight as in physical weight, but I mean in terms of the company's deep connections to what I love the most, and that is aircraft and aviation. And it shows because that display is absolutely uncompromised. However, the Revo G2 probably makes 
the most sense for most people because it has fantastic clarity, but it also has, uh, you know, the better all round features like the audio, the microphone, the inside out tracking, uh, that kind of thing, which I think most people would really appreciate because it means more setting up for the era, of course. Now consider this, a tracked focus Ferrari is no good at doing your local shopping, is it? But it's great around a track and it can do 200 miles an hour. That is the Vario Aero, okay? It is absolutely focused, pardon the pun, on the clarity, providing the best possible image in VR today. If that's what you want, that high-end experience, then that is the headset for you, without a doubt. But I think for a lot of people on the channel, the Revo G2 makes the most sense. I have a massive respect for that headset. It's what started the channel off in the first place. I love it. In fact, I've got two headsets now, two G2s. So I do love it as well. And it has many, many great features. Please let me know in the comments, guys. What are your thoughts on both of these headsets? I would imagine most people will pick the Revo G2. I totally understand that and respect that. Rest assured, there'll be plenty of content with all the major VR headsets, as well as some very exciting new ones in the future, you'll hear it here first, folks. So if you'd like to subscribe to the channel uh, and support future content, I would really, truly appreciate it. That's it for me, folks. Take care and bye for now.